Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody, welcome back. If you've been listening to the first hour, I want to welcome you back to Dr. Pat Show, Transformation Talk Radio. For those of you just tuning into the second hour, you can you can tell I'm chuckling a little bit. You know, Dr. Kelly Neff joining me here today and Benny, the three of us, we were talking cars. Oh, That's yeah. what we were talking about. I just was having like car envy right there and just talking, you know, sometimes Sometimes, you know, you just have to step back and say, you know what, I'm living life too. Yeah, we talk about this stuff and we come on and we're doing our life's work. But sometimes it's just about thinking, you know what, I would really love to have my red hot 68 charger back again. I really love to have that with a dual double chrome exhaust, that Hemi engine, boom, Mm -hmm. there we go. Well, we're not going to talk about anything quite that exciting, but maybe even more (laughs) exciting, you know, because it comes right along with it. You know, I I don't even want to touch the topic of uncovering your sexual consciousness. I can tell you, I can get right there talking about that 68 Challenger. (laughs) Uh, It it, it just, I, I could go... We're not going to go there, but we are going to go there. Let me just introduce all of you. You've heard her fill in for me on the show. You've heard her own show, of course. Dr. Kelly Neff joining me here today, psychologist, author, founder, director of the Lucid Planet, uh, reaches millions of people with not just her radio show, but her articles on psychology, spirituality, and wellness. Somebody that is really rocking the world of taking a message out there that is Busting through, as we like to say, crust busting through all of the boundaries about the way we think, the way we feel, and the freedom that is our divine birthright. Today, we're talking about uncovering your sexual consciousness. And why do we have to uncover it? Because it is covered up tightly. Ancient knowledge traditions across the globe have known for thousands of years that this balanced sexuality is key to our health, our wellness, and our longevity. But what does that mean in today's world? You know, what is sexual consciousness? And why is it that we are now longing to talk about it, bring it to the forefront, and understand the interconnected intimacy that is so part of who we are? And why? It is time now for us to reveal our true nature. That's Dr. Kelly Neff's message. Great to have you here, Dr. Kelly. (laughs) Great to be here, Dr. Pat. Thank you so much for that introduction. Wow. I love it. Um, I love the conversation because I'm telling you, that 68 red, that 68 charger, uh, not challenger charger that I was talking about. I, I got a text from somebody who said, Oh honey, don't, don't talk about the, the challenger. You got a charger. I said, yes, I did. <laughs> you want to talk about the, you want to talk about the 68, uh, uh, charger and the conversation about consciousness and spirituality today and sexuality. It is, it is part of that era that, you know, that 60 eras where we started to look at, at this idea of sexual consciousness and then we got amnesia. So I'd love for you to talk about the, you know, what you're doing in the resurrection of this, but what it has come to mean now in today's day and time. Great to have you here. Great to be here, Pat. And, you know, I think that that's really important. Um, when you mentioned how there are certain things that just bring us intrinsic joy and pleasure and excitement, whether it's 
your 68 Challenger or my boyfriend Jimmy's 69 GTO, <laughs> you know, both cherry red, I'm sure. Um, but Mine was. Yeah, so is his. <laughs> Mine was candy apple red with black yeah. stripes. <laughs> yeah, his is uh, carousel red. Is It's the official uh, old school, but he's repainting it more cherry. But anyway, you know, side topic. But, but the uh, point is that these things that trigger, they trigger these very intense feelings. And there's a, a fierceness and a strength to it and an excitement to it. And that, in a lot of ways, does parallel the work that I'm doing with this sexual consciousness emerging and the idea that we are slowly uncovering all those parts of ourselves that we've been told both as men and women in different ways. You can't talk about this and nobody will love you if you tell them this and you better toe the line and just do what everyone else is doing. Don't ask questions. Don't be different. All of these kind of limitations, and then you think about that car and like the way it's just so it like knows what it is and it loves it and it makes a statement. And really, truly, this whole idea of sexual consciousness is about connecting to that very deep rooted, authentic version of ourselves. And that really, for me, is the true you know, we all talk about revolution and evolution. The truest revolution is really getting to know who you truly are, and that is how we heal. And so yeah. for me, like this, this is really about healing. It's about be bringing people into a state of mindfulness and the present and kind of understanding that, you know, we have been repressed and suppressed and it's yeah. happened both on unconscious and conscious levels. And in order to re we can change it, but we actually need to become aware of this first. Yeah. I want to talk with you about this in a lot of different ways. One of them, I want to get back to something you said earlier. And I know that this is something that you're passionate about. You're writing about it. You know, you've got a fabulous book that is uh, in the process about it. Oh, yeah. Um, but I want to get back to something that you touched upon and really expand upon it. You know, something as natural, natural as sexual consciousness that has been repressed, Right. Mm -hmm. Someone said to me, oh, it's got to be about 20 years ago when we were talking about this. I don't know at what point in time. Someone said to me that the repression that you just mentioned is akin to never laughing ever in your life. Mm. I, and I thought, uh, uh, yeah. And he said, I want you to repress laughing. Uh, yeah. So, I mean. I want to talk about that because we have gone through generations of generations of putting an absolutely dark and grim and nasty perspective on sexual anything. Mm -hmm. You know what unless I'm saying? It, unless it entertains or exploits or sales products and then we're all for oh, it oh, oh, okay. you know but it's like <laughs> but they, but it's nasty though because it's not there, there really isn't a, like an authentic kind of loving sexual portrayal happening although things are changing and that's why i think um this idea of sexual consciousness is starting to gain a lot of traction because you're absolutely right mm -hmm. the ancients knew it whether we're talking about sumeria or egypt or the ancient taoist or the ancient native americans they all knew how important authentic genuine sexual expression was not only to their health but also to harmony to longevity um i mean and even now we know you know the power of orgasm and eroticism to heal is actually backed by science um but they've they've known these things for thousands and thousands of years and we've kind of forgotten it. Um, I know. So yes, that, that repression, the Kadoshka who are an ancient Nagual shamanic tradition, um, in North America and South America talked about how sexual repression is one of the major sources of disharmony in humans and that the lack of healthy expression is the root cause of abusive, violent and addictive behaviors. I mean, Oh my goodness. So, we can basically say that we're making ourselves sick by hiding who we are sexually, mm -hmm. by adopting other people's symbols and conditioning about our sexuality, by allowing the media and our culture and uh, the dogma of religion to dictate our sexual behaviors. We're actually doing mental, psychological, spiritual, emotional, and physical harm to ourselves. Yeah. And this is really important. Totally important. So let me, let me, uh, what, what do they say? Let me digress, but maybe not. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know if you can remember. We have a really hard time remembering this. Okay. 
now i i want us to really take a moment and go back in time three years not more than three right dr kelly mm -hmm. just three years if we could just toy with the idea of three years that's a big number for me pat it's a big <laughs> I'm, I'm so <laughs> than you okay you know like three years for me is like a flea on an elephant's butt um <laughs> but sorry but three years ago we are fighting and protesting and trying to put anti-gay laws into effect and struggling to understand the hatred behind people loving each other Th just three years ago mm -hmm. okay now i live in washington state and i gotta tell you we had a governor at the time and she was all over this mm -hmm. um you know, and by the way, we're the only state that had legislation passed and a popular vote uh, for a gay mar for a same sex marriage. But just three years ago, today, it's almost not a conversation. The yeah. only conversation we're having about it is the states that want to enact a law to prevent merchants from actually selling things to gay people that's the latest in the headline and that just makes no sense to me because we all know that gay people have some of the best disposable income they don't have you know a lot of them don't have kids or whatever like you, uh, you read about it gay there, there's a lot of wealthy gay people out there you should let yeah. them buy your, your stuff duh you're just know, shooting but, yourself in the foot but don't anyway. you find that the time for the conversation you're bringing to the forefront um is perfectly poised yeah for, because now with this, we're not taking on the arguments, right? You know, we're now saying, oh, by the way, we don't want you to throw that Muslim uh, man or woman off the roof because they're gay. We're now taking a stance on things like that. But isn't it the time now where we're having this conversation that you're bringing to the forefront? Yeah. Which is one of beauty as opposed to to one of sin isn't it's, that a big change it is well how can we hate our how, how can our natural body be sinful and our in the natural pleasurable experiences that we get as a gift of spirit how can that be a bad thing um i, I just want to briefly touch on what you yes, said please that, um you know now we're moving on to the more complex issues so we've kind of tackled the gay rights issue it's still happening but it's moving now we're on to transgender rights yep. and we're we're stopping rape against women and violence against women and those are really the two issues to me that um, when I was a sexuality professor, they were always the ones that people were kind of the most concerned and they were the most complicated issues of how do we do this? How do we integrate transgender people in every area? And how do we stop men from raping women? Because, you know, we talk about one in six women will be a victim of sexual assault, blah, blah. But what we should be really saying when we look at the classroom is one in six men here is going to rape someone. And we need to deal with this. And so the, the the fact that we can now have that dialogue, and I really, we'll, we'll talk more about this, but I mean, the internet, the way that social media and sense of community is changing and actually allowing a dialogue to happen with marginalized people is so powerful and so amazing. And I really do believe that things are changing. Yeah. Yeah, they are changing. And it used to say they were changing at a snail pace. That's not what's happening. It's not at a snail's pace. Things are changing yeah. so rapidly. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk with Dr. Kelly Neff. And Dr. Kelly, by the way, we're going to tell you about a radio show. Also, we're going to tell you about some of the events that she participates in. When we come back, you know, we're going to talk about what, what, are, what are the things we can learn from the ancient traditions of the past? Yes. You know, and what scares us most about having the forefront of who we become have the word sexual in it mm. stay tuned everyone we'll be right back Get into it for 2016. Do you want more prosperity, clarity, energy, and balance in your life? Join Lynn Brown now for one of her amazing workshops, each focusing on a key part of living your best life. For more information and to register for one of these amazing workshops, visit lynnbrownevent.com. That's lynnbrownevent.com. And get into it this 2016 with Lynn Brown. 
On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Time. Radio. Almost everyone at some time in their lives ask themselves, what am I? Most of our questions are ego generated and simply don't address the problem of our false self. It's time to relax your ego and embody your soul. Dr. Dan Cohen, neurologist, inventor, and author has created tools to awaken a new way to transform from who you thought you were into what you truly are. Visit toolstoawaken.com today. There are so many resources out there for meditation. But did you know that Atana's Heart Earth Healing Meditation is available for you for free? Yes, that's right. You can receive this free healing meditation today from Atana Vadili. All you need to do is visit his website, atanamethod.com. That's A-T-A-A-N-A method.com and sign up. You will receive your free meditation instantly. That's atanamethod.com. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit GlennaRice.com. Francine Vale is a being of light. She believes that all people of planet Earth are as well. As co-host of the Angel Healer Radio Show, Francine teaches you heart-centered ways to manifest healing on your own behalf and how to integrate love more fully into your daily life. Connect with your angels as you find your life flowing with ease and harmony. Walk the path of light with Francine and Dr. Pat Basili every month on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Yeah, Dr. Kelly Neff is in the house. But before we jump into talking about this and really take a look at, you know, the importance of of the symbols in our lives, but also some of the ancient traditions of the past, you know, what was it about them that we can bring forth? And by the way, what is it about those ancient traditions that are showing up now big time in our pop culture. But before we go to that, Kelly, would you mind, first of all, telling folks how they can find out more about you, tell them about Lucid Planet, tell them about the radio show, uh, and uh, give them your website too. Absolutely. Um, You can find everything you need to know about me at thelucidplanet.com. And you can also listen to all of the previous episodes of Lucid Planet Radio just by going to lucidplanetradio.com. I can't believe it, Dr. Pat. I just wrapped yesterday my 56th episode oh, of nice. the show. Fizz <laughs> try saying that five times fast. Um, anyway, <laughs> and the, sh- the show is really all about helping to empower people as we experience this global shift of consciousness and we're all changing and evolving. And it's really a dream come true for me to be able to highlight so many incredible and inspiring people and what they're giving to the world and the tools that they have. I mean, just yesterday we were talking about how you can heal absolutely anything by shifting your consciousness <sighs> with a, with Dr. Stephen Hall, who's a 30 year uh, veteran of functional medicine and alternative medicine and used to teach at the universities and he, his, you know, changing understanding of it all is so fascinating. And, um, 
yeah, so I, I feel incredibly blessed to be able to do this. And I, I, I'm a academically trained psychologist huh. and I was a professor and a researcher. Pat and I, of course, went to the same <laughs> graduate school. Yeah, we did. <laughs> um, and uh, both ended up here. So it's not that much of a stretch, is it? It's really not. <laughs> well, I, I love the synchronicity of this. Not only did we go to the same school, but we had the same thesis advisor. We did. I, I switched for my dissertation. But here we are. I love the way the universe works. Yeah. And you and I, ne we didn't meet each other while we were in program, but we did come from the same sort of uh, educational evolution in that way. Yes. And I think that's the coolest thing uh, that, you know, we get to do that. We here, you and I went to school thinking we were going to be all about whatever we were going to be. And now, <laughs> and now here we are being uh, about what we're, we're going to be, but it's totally not what was in our game plan. Was it? No, no. no. And I love that. I love, I love that too. I'm so open to it. And I feel like in a way it's better because this is such a, you know, just really connected to mm -hmm. that authentic self. And wanting yeah. to share that. And that's yeah. really all we can do. Well, and I got to we tell you something. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Before we get to that, we got a caller that we obviously have cracked a little bit of something open here. So <laughs> we got, we have one of our callers. I think we should bring her on. What do you think? Let's do it. All Absolutely. right. Benny. Christine from Seattle. Welcome to the show. Hey, Christine. Welcome to the show. Hi, Christine. Hey, Dr. Pat. Hey there. Uh, uh, yes. I, I didn't catch your name. He was Dr. Oh, Dr. Kelly. Kelly. Dr. Kelly. Oh, Hi. Wonderful. This is a great subject. I'm a Halloween Scorpio with a 68 Mustang, so I can completely, I can completely relate. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to make a couple of comments, and I, I yeah. love the subject matter today, obviously. Um, I wanted yeah. to say that, um, you know, as far as I, I had this incident that happened in the pool the other day. I was going to go do my laps, and um, the, this gentleman uh, got really, um, he got angry. He got uh, aggressive, and he's like, I'm going to wait for you outside afterwards. Wow. Oh, wow. And uh, this was quite the shocker for me, and um, I was really kind of like, you know, what? <laughs> Is this really happening? Um, wow. And so, you know, I'm a gay woman, and um, uh, I'm all the things that are kind of minority. I'm brown. I'm, you know, Hispanic. I'm gay. I'm a woman. I'm, I'm uh, now middle-aged, so... So this is, you know, this is kind of interesting that, that you were talking about that. Um, but I was, I did do some kind of uh, alongside of some of this stuff. I was kind of, interestingly enough, looking at female genital mutilation um, yeah. in, yeah. you know, West Africa and in certain parts yep. of Africa and also in this country, too. Yep. But I just wanted to say that, you know, um, some of the things I heard about that uh, and, and how that from the get-go girls are taught that they are, you know, this is their place and don't try to get above this and all that. Um, and I wanted to say that, you know, rape is not a crime of passion. It's really not a, no. it's not a crime of sex. It's a matter of power. It's a it's crime power. of power. And, and I have to say that, you know, growing up a Jehovah's Witness and having a lot of this polarity, this resistance um, to what your sexual nature is, um, I, I, I'm, I don't, I'm not sorry about the way I grew up, uh, mm -hmm. but I think it's really important for people to capitalize on what happens to them, to make something with it. Instead of having it be just expensive, have it be worth it. Because I have to say, you know, one of my favorite uh, people that writers is Quentin Christie. He's dead now. But one of the things he said is that he was born in 1905, and he was one of the first people in England to walk around and drag and get beat up all the time. But, you know, he said um, it's difficult for young people nowadays to understand sexual or understand any of these things about how to be themselves because sexual, quote, freedom has become more important than identity. And I look at that and I think, yes, that is such a huge issue now. When you talk about what is happening with repression, yeah. I think the, the, the most prominent thing that I see happening with um, uh, repression is that we are repressing ourselves. And what we see is a reflection of that outside of ourselves. So I think if we really want to get back to, you know, how to be easy with ourselves sexually, not, I didn't really mean easy, but you know what I mean. Um, mm -hmm. If we want to be at, at ease with ourselves and have this become something that's a part of us instead of something that we march in the streets all the time about, we need to first address our, our own identity, who we are, our self-esteem, our self-worth. Because if you don't provide a parking space, they just can't park there anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is really, really important. You don't change people's minds by legislation. You change that you hope to change their minds through boredom, actually, which is what Quentin Chris says. If you can talk about it, get it out in the open, normalize it, 
then the legislation follows. Other than that, you're just forcing people to have that resistance. Mm. Wow. Kelly, wow. What, what, <laughs> Kelly, I can't wait to hear what you would like I, to I say mean, to Christine. I, com- I completely agree, Christine. Thank you so much for calling in Absolutely. and for sharing that perspective. As a psychologist, I am so dedicated to helping people actually find that self-worth and self-acceptance. And it mm-hmm. comes, I believe, first and foremost, from addressing the underlying sexual symbols that we have adopted um, because you hit the nail on the head. We're doing this to ourselves. We're like the prisoners holding up the walls and locking ourselves in the cage um, because we're adopting what we perceive from the outside and then allowing that to become our own identity instead of genuinely tapping into what our identity is ourselves. So I've done a lot of work um, on creating my own kind of model of the underlying sexual symbols and where they come from and how we address them and how we work with Mm -hmm. them with the idea of being able to integrate those and then creating right action in our own lives. So I I I think that your work is really interesting because, um, again, this is not like, oh, you shouldn't be doing what you're doing or nobody should be doing what they're doing. It's just that it's really great that you're integrating self-esteem and self-worth with the work you're doing, because unless you have those, you can be fighting the world forever. Yeah. And, um, and that's not what we want. We don't want to manage these problems. We want to eradicate them. And by having, you know, the self-worth and having these, these ways in which we, I love that you said, you know, gay people have so much expendable cash. We do. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, and, and honestly, 30 years ago, I said, you know, if, the, if they really got smart, they'd say, uh, yeah, we'll allow you get, to get married because I can go after you for their debt. Um, and, 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 you know, if you're married, that's what happens in, quote, you know, uh, traditional marriages right now. People get uh, gone after for the other one's debt. But I love that you are integrating these things because it, it's just so important not just to have resistance for resistance sake or protests, which are yeah. very costly. They're not free. It's important to have this, this starting with ourselves first and watching as it affects the world and watching as it, ha- as it transforms the world into that which it becomes a non-issue. And it, it just, it's, it's not an issue for anyone to argue about any longer. I love it. Wow, thank Christine, you so thank you work. so much. Yeah, thanks. you know, and we're going to pick up on this topic here and carry it right in because it is one that is so important. Um, and I want to just say this while we go to break. How have the protests of the past, how have, Christina will relate to this, how have the protests of the past, the marches, uh, the marches for women's rights, the marches for men's rights, by the way, and I'll talk to that when we come back. How about, let's just say it. Can you even believe it? Some of you very young youngsters, the burning of the bra ceremony in Atlantic City. How does any of that contribute? Uh, I hate bras. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I got to tell you, I I don't really know many women that love that love their bra. I really don't. You know, that that has got to be the sentence you get in life. Uh, to walk around fashionably in the United States. But that's another topic. When yeah. we come back. We'll free the we, nip. It's all part of it. You know. Oh, we're going to be, oh my God, don't even get me there because I'm going to be jumping into my, you know, the the fat, famous tennis sis- sisters and, oh, don't even get me there. Let's take a short break, it. everybody. I will be right back. Kelly Neff is in the house. <laughs> Sky Siegel co-hosts one of today's most popular psychic shows, Angels and Answers, with Artie Hoffman as she communicates healing messages from the spirit world. These messages can be astounding, enlightening, and life-changing. Born with the God-given talent of inner guidance and the amazing ability to heal, Sky has healed thousands of people. Schedule a reading with Sky now. Call 908-500-1474 and visit skyofangels.com. Do you want to achieve your goals? Do you want to strengthen relationships with others? Do you want to improve your financial status? Colette Marie Steffen is partnering with Mark Kettenbach to bring you an energetic upgrade online experience. Unfold and develop your full potential. Visit energeticupgrade.com today for more information. That's energeticupgrade.com. 
Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back from living the life you want for yourself. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Katherine Moss is a hit show for women in recovery who are ready to live life on purpose. Tune in and let Katherine help you live your truth one day at a time. Live each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Hi, this is Leslie Fontaine. It's always surprising where we feel like a victim. We hate that word, but it's a chance to shift that energy where we want something out there to fix us. We are coming from within with the shift. When we find these spots, we get alarmed, but we can allow source, our higher self, and our will to change that intention into empowerment. Choose today to allow that. Choose to forgive yourself and choose to be totally responsible. Are you ready to shift into your best life? Visit LeslieFontaine.com and let's talk about unfolding all that you want to be, do, and have. You'll find sessions, classes, and audio products to help remove the blocks and move you into your potential. And listen to my show, Sheer Alchemy, on Transformation Talk Radio, Wednesdays at 10 Pacific, 1 Eastern. Yeah, Benny, Benny the man is on it again. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Benny. Thank you for that. Yes. You know, Dr. Kelly Neff and I, I I'm telling you, I, I, I got to slow my heart down right here because during the break, you know, she and I uh, and Christine, thank you so much for calling in. Yeah. Um, during yeah. the break, we were sitting back and we were reflecting about a couple of different things. First of all, sexual consciousness. We were talking about that, but we're talking about it in a, in a different way. Um, and we're talking about some of the taboos that are associated in the world today that, by the way, in ancient wisdom and ancient traditions, right, Dr. Kelly? They really weren't there. But no. today, we're going to spend time and energy talking about the Williams sisters and the fact that their tops are so tight that part of their anatomy is showing and you were going to make a big dang deal about that and not really talk about the fact that hello it's tennis there's nothing exposing and by the way what would you like them to do dr kelly yeah seriously they should just chop their nipples off so uh -oh. that you know it's <laughs> it's less offensive to all of us trying to watch our sports being distracted by women's breasts i'm sorry i i have such a problem with this because as a woman and as somebody who's very comfortable with my body i don't appreciate always being told that my body is something to be ashamed of my body is illegal my body is uh, so provocative it could cause men to be uh, abusive towards me all of these ideas are part of keeping women's sexuality repressed and i just personally don't appreciate it um, and having spent time living in Europe where there's, there's breasts just like on TV, like for no reason, like in a shower commercial, they don't even feel the need to censor it where women can go topless without it being illegal. Um, it bothers me that in the United States still we're having this debate when it, this, this is another, like we talked about how gay rights, this is another thing like that should almost be a no brainer, particularly they're not trying to expose themselves in a sexual way. They're wearing clothes. So the fact that people can't stop staring at their nips, that's their fault. You know what I'm saying? That's not the tennis player's fault. Um, so I'm, I'm a big proponent of the hashtag free the nip movement. And I will be at the Denver topless March in a couple weeks um, where Denver, you're actually allowed to be topless. There'll be over uh, 10, 15,000 people. 
as long as you don't act in a flirtatious way, that's the thing. The cops well, let's are there. talk about this. Isn't I, that I want crazy? to talk about this. Yeah, yeah, but let's talk about this because it does go back to ancient traditions. It oh, really yeah. does. And, you know, I, I, I need to take a moment. I don't usually do this because, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't usually talk about a brand, right? Mm. I don't usually say, oh, let's talk about Nike. But let's talk about Nike for a minute if we could. Sure. I'm not necessarily, I don't have Nike sneakers. And for those of you listening, no, they're not a sponsor of the show. None of that. But what did Nike do that has literally busted through what you talked about before? Mm. What did they do? Okay. Nike has produced advertising focusing on transgender athlete Chris Mosier. Awesome. Now, you want to talk about breaking barriers right there, right? Mm -hmm. I mentioned burning bras in Atlantic City. And while people don't think that that was a movement at the time, it really did make a statement. But how do these acts, and especially what you just said, how do we bring these acts to the forefront that says we can be who we are? And no, 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 you cannot flirt. You cannot do this. You cannot do that. And that's not really our problem. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, we, we have to remember that women in many parts of the world still have don't have basic human rights in some places. No, they and don't. Ni and neither do transgender people. So oh, this, not at all. This, this dialogue we're having, it's not so much that it's a privilege for us in America to say, hey, I you know, maybe my nips show through my top or, hey, uh, here's a transgender athlete in a in an advertisement. It's not a privilege, but it's like our duty to show it, the rest yeah. of the world that like we need yeah. to move into the 21st century and give people basic human rights. And that means accepting their body and allowing them to feel empowered over their body, no matter what their anatomy or their genitals look like, that they have that human right. And this is such a no brainer to me, Dr. Pat. And I, I, I almost, it bothers me. I want to get angry. Like, how can this world still be the way mm -hmm. it is? But it's okay because, you know, we're here doing this work. And just like we were talking to uh, Christine, our caller, yeah. you know, this starts, it's an individual revolution of self esteem. So if you're upset at the injustice, towards people, towards women or towards gender people or towards gay people, the way you fight that is by accepting and loving the sexuality within yourself. Yeah. And, and let's talk about that, Dr. Kelly, because yeah, I, sure. this, this really gets right at the core of it, what you just said. Each of us has within us an innate birthright to be authentically who we are. Authentic. The word authentic is one of the most searched on words. And I think it's one of the least understood words. Actually, it's right up there. Integrity's first. This is the next mm -hmm. one. And mm -hmm. I would like to talk about what you just said. Let's go back to ancient times. Let's go back and look at what ancient times means in terms of sexual consciousness. Yeah. Somehow along the way, we have discovered the norm. Uh, and I, I can't speak for men. So let me just talk about women here. I'm not saying men don't go through this to not just not be comfortable in our own skin, but dislike who we are in it. And by the way, dislike the skin itself almost to the point. No, not almost, but to the point of shame and guilt. So doesn't sexual consciousness bring us back and remind us of our birthright to honor who we are, regardless of what we look like. So talk about that for us. Absolutely. Talk about these ancient traditions, which we'd so like to bury. So Absolutely. I mean, well, when we talk about the word, what is sexual consciousness? Consciousness mm -hmm. is the state or quality of awareness or being aware of something within yourself. So when I use the term sexual consciousness, what I'm specifically referring to is awareness of ourselves as sexual beings, not only physically, but also through the depths of our creative, alchemical, transformative energies that we possess, that this is something that everybody has within them. And we've known for thousands of years. Um, one of my favorite uh, examples is the white tigress t tradition of Taoism, which is an elite society of women dating back over 5,000 years. And their whole idea was essentially that women would take on sexual practices for the purpose of realizing their full feminine potential and even immortality. In other words, sex was literally the catalyst for spiritual growth and the way to gain youthfulness. And they understood this by working with chi or energy and absorbing the energy of their male partners. And they actually had a motto, Dr. Pat, 
that mm. sexual energy is the reason a person is born and the lack of it is why a person dies. Oh, and boy. there there are accounts of women in their late 50s, 60s who look like they're 20 years old. And this this is really an oral tradition. It wasn't until the book came out by C. Lee, which is a is a pseudonym called The Sexual Teachings of the White Tigresses. It was the first time a Westerner's ever been allowed to their temple and to learn the teachings. And she only learned the introduction. There's so many other levels of the teaching. Um, so again, but, but Taoism, even, even not the white tigresses, but all of Taoism mm -hmm. had a very strong focus on that yin and yang and that balance, finding harmony not only between the male and female relationships in your life, but also in terms of the masculine and feminine elements within the self. And that is incredibly important. Um, I, yeah. I also wanted to talk a little bit about the Native American traditions. Yes, um, please. And the Kadoshka, for example, said, the great spirit gives us two gifts, the gift of free will and the gift of orgasm. And they would talk about how orgasm is designed to help us know who we truly are. That through sexual expression and through enjoying sexuality, we can actually get closer to truth, objective, universal truth that lies within ourselves. That is a very powerful way of looking at things and something that's been really incredibly distorted and kind of lost. Um, even though now science is saying the same thing, orgasms, people who have more frequent orgasms have lower rates of cancer, of heart disease, of depression. They sleep better. They have more energy, all of these things. So they, they were onto something. Um, and yeah, I, I find it incredibly fascinating because in spite yeah. of all of that, 15% of women have never had an orgasm. Yeah. And, you know, this is something, it's, mm -hmm. it has to do with that repression, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things I want to talk about is what the effects of repression are. And I, let's go ahead and skip the break here because I want to make sure we're getting this, you know, we're, 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 we're able to have this conversation in full. Cool. Um, yeah. And what, what I want to talk about is, you know, you and I both, you know, went on to talk about what repression is, what the psychological effect of repression is, and what the emotional, and now let's talk about the spiritual. And what I mean by, a pre by repression, when we repress something. So we're talking about sexual consciousness today. We're talking about what that means to be fully expressed in that right? Fully expressed. And if we're not fully expressed, Dr. Kelly, then we're fully repressed. Yeah. Okay. So this is really, let's talk about this. So if we're not fully expressed in sexual consciousness, I believe we're fully repressed because I don't think we can be partially sexually conscious and therefore partially sexually repressed. That's I don't know why I think it is all or nothing. Yeah. School me on that, please. Well, I, I think it's important to recognize that this is a process and the self awakening and illumination mm. and this, these, these levels of awareness, do they happen in one amazing epiphany or do they happen over time? Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. both can be valid. Um, what I will say is that this repression, even a little bit, you're right, it can yeah. really, it can hurt us. So, you know, like the ancients would say that sexual expression would strengthen our life force energy. So we're talking about mm -hmm. kind of the spiritual energetic component. But what they would also say is that lack of it can be indicative of weakness and self-neglect. And if we avoid that sexual repression and orgasm for too long, we will age more quickly. Our health will, will suffer. We'll be more likely to have diseases. We'll feel more disconnected. Um, and, 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 from, and that's because we're actually not moving the life force energy through our bodies. There is definitely something to be said for that Tantra kind of perspective of we can use sexuality to move energy. And in my upcoming book, I'm going to be talking a lot about sex as an energetic practice. I have articles on the internet about sex and the chakras, about mm -hmm. chakra meditations and affirmations that can help enhance your sex life. Um, but it is the repression is a very real thing. And, you know, Dr. Pat, um, when I was in graduate school, I worked on a lot of studies on um, yeah. men who have sex with men. And yeah. I, I did my master's thesis uh, with AIDS Project Los Angeles and all this stuff. And one of the things that is most incredible when you look at the actual scientific peer reviewed research, men who are closeted. So gay men who are closeted 
are much more likely to end up getting cancer, mm. heart problems, other, other diseases. That closeting will make you sick. And I can speak from personal experience, Dr. Mm-hmm. Pat, because I was closeted for, I'm bisexual. Everyone knows mm-hmm. it now. Um, and polyamorous, but, I, but during my youth, I was very closeted and I honestly thought that like my sexuality was going to get me into trouble. My story is like when, when I first started, you know, experimenting with the stuff, I was so excited and yeah. I thought it was so amazing. And, and I just wanted to tell everyone <laughs> not realizing like as like a 13, 14 year old, you're not supposed to like go talk about it. And I got, I got slut shamed so badly that I was <laughs> like, okay, I got to just go underground. Clearly like my sexuality is a problem, you know? And so you asked earlier in the show, yeah, look back three years. Three years ago, I was on the operating table having my my uterus pulled out in an emergency hysterectomy. And wow. I can't prove it, but I have a belief that part of the reason why my uterus was so sick was because I closeted myself and I repressed mm-hmm. my sexuality for so long. So I have a personal investment and passion in this topic because of my own journey yeah. and experience. And I see that reflected in so many people everybody has something that they're sexually ashamed of or guilty of. It's the way we've been conditioned yeah. and, and we, we take on these symbols and these messages and we integrate them into our belief system, but we can unravel that belief system. I genuinely yeah. believe that we can. And I feel like I'm kind of living proof of that reality. You are living proof of it, but most importantly, you're a living spokesperson for it. And I want to weave something into the conversation here that you touched upon earlier. And I need to go back to it is I don't know how in this country it's become fashionable to rape women, women. Oh my gosh. I, I don't really understand how personally me, I was asleep at the switch um, and we're all asleep at the switch again and why it's so difficult to really address this. But I want to touch upon what you just said about keeping a secret. Um, You and I both went on to study aspects of this, but I am not an expert. But I will ask you this question. You know, isn't the notion to really repress what has happened to you as a woman or a man, by the way, who was sexually abused. Now let's couple that with beyond sexual abuse. Is there such a thing? Yes, there's rape. Mm -hmm. Um, And and so, but yet we hear from families and stories, Dr. Kelly, don't talk about it. Let's keep it a secret. Nobody knows about it. It's taboo to express ourselves. How damaging is that? This is so damaging. let's go back to ancient times about that too. How damaging is that? And how much of a violation is that in the effect on people? Mm, so, so incredibly damaging, Dr. Pat. And I'm, I'm glad you bring it up because so yeah. many people who have experience, I have had twice, uh, people have, uh, men have tried to sexually assault me mm-hmm. and I was fortunate to get away. But most, many women are not as fortunate. And I know so many women who have, experienced the trauma of this and felt like they had no support. They don't want to talk to the authorities. Nobody understands them. No one wants to hear about it. And they don't want to victimize themselves by making a big deal out of it. As children, there's nothing more violating than being told that this, you're not allowed to express this traumatic thing that happened to you, you know, less than like 0.1% of rape cases are fictionalized. And of course, that's all we see in the media, right? But a child is not going to make this up. Okay, listen to your children um, and have that dialogue with them, even though it's scary and hard. And would we really rather push these things under the rug? It seems ludicrous to me, Dr. Pat. Um, So many people have are experienced this. I literally can look through my closest friends and say that almost all of them have had some experience with rape or sexual assault from men in America. And we live in nice neighborhoods. You know, we have professional jobs. All right. It's almost always in college. College is really that that's where my experiences were. And I think that we have to accept that this is a real thing. And um, I actually I have a guest coming up on my show October 5th. Her name's Adrian Truscott. And you might have heard of her. They had a they they sensationalized her story. You know, a, a comedian who makes rape jokes funny. And, but what's really interesting about her show, it is like so ultra feminist. She does her entire stand up comedy show wearing no pants and no underwear in a leather jacket and then keeps taking off layers of her top. 
And her whole idea is no matter what a woman's doing, it doesn't justify raping her. And we have to look at the men who are doing this for power and understand what their motivations are and have both women and men hold other men accountable mm -hmm. for the fact that they're perpetrating this violence against women. That yeah that this is a men's problem. It's not people, rape and sexual assault is always taught as like a woman's problem. Go have a buddy system, cover your drink, don't wear your hair in a ponytail. This, all of this is BS. You can't avoid being raped. And it's, it's wrong to tell women that they can somehow stop this. Really, it's up to men to stop being rapers is what I say. And that's, I saw some stand-up from her and I thought it was so good. So I invited her on my show to kind of share her message because sometimes humor is the way to get through to people, even about such a serious topic, you know, and you know, from the psychology of persuasion, if yeah. you go too hard, if your message is too intense or fearful, people will shut off and won't even listen to it because they just, they, they can't handle it. So if you have a softer message and there's a little bit of comedy and a different perspective involved, um, it is helpful. But yes, so to answer your question, this is a major thing and it needs to be talked about. And I, I, I taught human sexuality for seven years. And every time I got to the class on this topic, there would be like 10 girls crying that would say, I have to leave or I can't come to class for the rest of this class. And it's because they had been through this and they were traumatized and no one had ever talked to them about it. And so I would sit and talk to them about it after class. I would just sit and talk to them. And that's sometimes all they really needed was someone to hear their story and not judge them or not victimize them. And, um, yeah, this is a real thing. So, well, it's, it's not only a real thing, but what also it is, is if there were ever going to be a time, uh, and, and, you know, someone made a comment to me the other day, <laughs> And it was kind of like the comment was, well, Pat, what are you going to do now? Um, you know, uh, what battle are you going to make, you know, if in fact we do now get a, a female president? I mean, yeah. you know, what what other barriers are there? And as if to say, OK, you can now retire from talking right. about anything. Right. And right. I turned around to them and I said, OK, I just want to give you some information and maybe this is something that you should do. I said, have you have you absolutely looked at the latest statistics on rape in the United States? Yeah. I said, have you stopped and taken a look at that? Um, and, and by the way, ha have you looked at it in terms of the reported cases versus nothing you're ever going to hear about. Yeah. And I said, you know, and I said, let me just say this to you. This is not about women, right? This is not, this is about humanity. And I think that's what you and I are talking about here. It's the divine. You know, feminine. this is a humanity conversation, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'm really grateful for people like Brock Turner and people, and social media, as much as he is literally like the scum of the earth and so unbelievably detestable, <laughs> but the outrage I mean, it galvanized people behind this issue like nothing I've ever seen. So yeah. the fact that this happened and this poor girl went through this traumatic experience and justice was not done, but literally millions of people saw the injustice and wanted to change it. And that is powerful. That's really amazing. So because of social media, marginalized communities like transgender people or you know, these really sensitive topics that have no voice and no dialogue suddenly are put right in front of us. Yeah. And it, it, it is starting, things are starting to change, but Pat, you nailed it that this really is a humanity thing. And I think yeah. about divine, we each have every man and woman or transgender or whatever your gender is. We all have within us the divine masculine, and the divine feminine. And that's what I was talking about. That Taoism perspective yeah. at the beginning that seeking to balance those is how we find harmony so when women are disproportionately affected by violence from men, that actually hurts all of us in yeah, a very does. way. So part of this healing, there's many men that are also participating in this healing of the divine feminine as well. And yeah. um, it's definitely something to really focus on and think about. I I um I have uh, I'm friends with an organization that just uh, initiated a major uh, crowdfunding initiative. Um, um, for anti-bullying. And I, I think that when people say to me, Dr. Kelly, and I know we got about two minutes left and I want to ask you this question. I know when they say to me, well, Pat, you know, have you run out of things to do? I always say to them, are you willing to step up and put an end to bullying, period? Bullying in schools, bullying of the elderly, 
you know, nobody wants to talk about that. Oh, it's and terrible. bullying in our politics and, you know, in our <laughs> conversations. And I say to them, are you willing to go to any length to do that? And what I get back is a gaping stare. And so thank you for doing what you're doing. Thank you for speaking out. And thank you for opening up the door for a conversation uh, uh, whose time has is, is come. And, and I want to know what your personal message is and again. And please tell folks how they can tune into your show. Fabulous show, everybody. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Pat. Um, my message more than anything really is opening that door for people to connect to their authentic self and to really empower themselves to be responsible over the way that their universe unfolds because we all have that power within ourselves. And uh, sometimes we do that just through being really fearless and open. And that's kind of what I bring to the table. Hashtag no filter. Um, so, <laughs> but yes, I, I would love to have everyone tune into my show, Lucid Planet Radio. Uh, you can find out more on the lucidplanet.com. It's Wednesdays at two o'clock Pacific right here on Transformation Talk Radio, CRN Digital, WBLQ. Um, and also, yeah, you can come hear me speak. I will be speaking at the N5D Paradigm Shift Conference. So come check that out. Yeah, everybody. And by the way, yeah, you're probably listening to Dr. Kelly on iHeart and other, 90 other media channels. And let me tell you, we're just warming up here, everybody. Dr. Kelly Neff, Benny, thank you for doing what you do. And I love all of you out there for saying yes to a positive life. We'll see you next time. Yes. Lights go out and I can be saved. Tides that I tried to swim against. Put me down upon my knees. Oh, I beg, I beg and please sing and come out of things I say. The preceding audio was via a Skype call.